Fearing the worst, parents of a newborn diagnosed with an uncommon condition were ready. While wearing an orange t-shirt and a pumpkin on her belly for Halloween night, Sierra went into labor at the last possible moment. Bentley, her new son's name, and an estimated birth date of October 31, 2015, were all printed on the garment. Dustin and Sierra hopped in the car and headed to the hospital, but they were short on supplies. No bottles, diapers, or car seat to bring their newborn son home. With the intention of quickly burying him in it, they brought a onesie, matching pants, and fluffy socks. The family of Little Ohio Town Sugar Creek were aware that Bentley suffered from a rare disorder in which his brain was expanding beyond his skull. Medical professionals allegedly informed Sierra and her husband that their newborn kid would not have a long lifespan. The doctors had forewarned her that he would remain cognitively impaired if he did not pass away. They decided to carry the pregnancy to term despite suggestions that they consider having an abortion. Only a few hours remained till the due date, which was the night before the procedure, before saying goodbye. They had arranged to see their kid, even if it was just for an hour. We were eager to meet him, Sierra told the Washington Post. We were simply relieved that he had survived to this far so that we might meet him when he was well, but Bentley thought otherwise. Doctors at Boston Children's Hospital came up with a means to reinsert his brain into his cranium in what has been called the granddaddy of all cases, his parents say he is now seven months old and alert, according to top neurosurgeon Mark Proctor of Boston Children's Hospital, speaking to the Boston Globe, the treatment proved life-saving, nonetheless, it will not restore a normal life, difficulties will inevitably arise due to Bentley's encephalocele an extremely rare congenital condition that causes the brain to bulge out of the skull. As per the National Organization of Rare Disorders, encephalocele is an extremely rare congenital condition wherein the brain protrudes from the skull during gestation and the surrounding bones do not develop normally. Typically, a thin layer of skin or membranes covers the part of the brain that lies outside the skull. One out of every 10,000 American babies is born with the abnormality which affects about 375 children annually and can lead to intellectual and physical disabilities, impaired vision, seizures, and weaker muscles in the limbs, especially the arms and legs. As reported by the CDC, we don't know what causes this ailment. According to experts, there is a range of severity for neurological illnesses such as Bentley's, from mild to severe, Alan Cohen, chief of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital has stated that the brain membranes and brain fluid could be contained in the burst sac. When the sac is filled with brain tissue that is no longer needed, the surgeon will typically remove it during surgery. The surgeon will need to devise a plan to reattach the brain to the skull if it contains any vital brain structures. We didn't think we had a chance, stated 25 years old Dustin and Sierra. Sugar Creek is a little town in Ohio where they both spent their childhoods. The two girls were introduced when they were two years old by their mothers, who had known each other since high school. According to Sierra, they were wed before they turned 21. Two months down the road, they welcomed their first kid, Bob. Their son is doing fine, and Sierra said her first pregnancy and delivery were easy. In December, they started making preparations for Bentley. It didn't matter to us if it was a little girl or a young boy, she said. All we wanted to do was make sure Bob had a sibling. The couple was planning to have a baby the following month. The kids started kicking nonstop the second time around, according to Sierra, so it seemed like nothing had changed. The horrifying news regarding the baby's skull was relayed to Sierra and her husband during an ultrasound. They went to the doctor at 22 weeks to find out the gender of the baby, in order to do an ultrasound. Her doctor squirted some fluid onto her abdomen and looked inside. Something appeared to be off with the baby's cranium, and she said he became serious, which worried them. Maybe he had lost his crown, maybe more. It wasn't immediately apparent. They brought her and her husband to the hospital so they could undergo additional tests. I went into tears immediately, she said. I wasn't sure he'd make it. After finding out the baby's life couldn't survive, the couple considered having an abortion. The family were informed by neurosurgeons at a Canton hospital about Bentley's congenital defect, who warned them that the baby's chances of survival were bleak. There was an urgency for Bentley to be cradled in his parents' arms if he makes it. The doctors informed them, no one was there to clean him, measure him, or remove the delivery fluids from his neck while the nurses covered him in a blanket. His loved ones treasured every second they spent with him because they never knew when it may be their last. He was perfect, Sierra said. 
being able to hold him made all the difference, regardless of the time we had left, sobbing, breathing, and moving, that was Bentley, through it all, he was the center of attention, during his first four or five hours on this earth, everyone was holding their breath, hoping for something to happen, even after 36 hours, Bentley still hadn't been lowered. Sierra said that his relatives had been passing him around, we went to the nurse and asked, what do we do now, she explained, after receiving medical advice to bring Bentley home and make arrangements for hospice care, the family listened, Bentley had some health problems, he was hospitalized due to a respiratory illness, strep throat, and staph infections in his lungs, at one point, doctors worried that he may become permanently paralyzed if they removed his breathing equipment, though he did, though, adding, he was awake, Sierra swore, he was staring right at us, when Bentley was approximately four weeks old, he saw a specialist at Columbus Nationwide Children's Hospital, after reviewing Bentley's MRI, Sierra claims a neurosurgeon informed her that Bentley would not survive because of significant brain damage both inside and outside of his skull, at that moment, we had no confidence, she stated, at four months old, his parents were informed by a surgeon that their child seemed to be using his brain, which led them to send him to the Cleveland Clinic, the surgeon was unsure of his ability to safely reinsert it into Bentley's skull, though, after then, the family went to Boston Children's Hospital, Bentley was brought to the surgical team by Dustin and Sierra, each year, the team handles a few cases of severe encephalocele, using 3D printed models, medical professionals created a surgical plan for Bentley, the idea was developed in collaboration with Proctor, the neurosurgeon, and John, the chief plastic surgeon at Boston Children's Hospital. When Bentley was five months old, a large portion of his brain, the area that controls movement, thinking through problems, and vision, was enclosed in a pouch that protruded from his skull, because Bentley was using his brain, which was hidden beneath a layer of golden locks. It couldn't be removed as many encephalocele instances can. His surgical team trained and rehearsed their skills on 3D printed models, Bentley's cranium had to be extended by the surgeons to accommodate his brain, which was 100 cubic centimeters outside of it, they came up with a plan to open up Bentley's skull and generate more space by making many vertical cuts into it, Bentley's brain would be able to return to his skull thanks to special dissolving plates that would hold the area open, on May 24th, the group went to work, Bentley's brain was successfully replaced by neurosurgeons after a portion of his skull was removed, the skin and membranes covering his brain were removed, and his curls were shaved, Bentley had a portion of his brain outside of his skull, which included a greater portion of the right occipital lobe and a smaller portion of the right frontal lobe, experts removed all of the cerebrospinal fluid from his brain, after that, the scientists removed the cranium and replaced the brain within his skull, after watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts, feel free to share your opinions in the comments section, now, let's watch another similar story, this was completely unexpected, and the mother's panicked reaction was one of disbelief, she had no idea what had transpired, and her baby was sleeping peacefully, the kind mother brushed her sleeping daughter's hair delicately so as not to wake her, what followed was going to be a living nightmare, and she was completely unprepared, Patricia Lewis's devotion to her two children was unwavering, they were residents of a peaceful Nashville, Tennessee neighborhood, even though she was expecting her third child, nothing could have prepared her for the shock she felt upon discovering her daughter was sick, overnight, her stomach had changed shape and expanded at an exponential rate, concern was the mother, who was 34 years old, are you alright? My darling, does it hurt at all, nodding, the small child said, mom, I'm not feeling well, Patricia had always shown Jamie the utmost love and care, Patricia had committed her life to providing Jamie with all the necessities for her to succeed from the day she was born, thus, Patricia's anxiety level skyrocketed the moment Jamie's belly grew, Paul, Jamie's dad, was also concerned, he was unable to be there for his wife at her time of need because of the long hours he spent away from home as a truck driver, many other explanations for her daughter's unusual stomach had occurred to Patricia, she first chalked it up to gas or indigestion, but as the days went on and the swelling got worse, her anxiety levels rose, Patricia was afraid to take Jamie to the emergency room, but she finally did it, the thought that her daughter could be ill was too much for her to handle, and she was terrified of the doctor's diagnoses, Patricia, however, realized it was time to get Jamie checked out when he began to complain of gastrointestinal distress and shown signs of lethargy, 
Jamie was just three years old when Patricia first suspected she may be pregnant, which was a completely absurd assumption to make. In her mind, the possibility was nil. For Patricia, the unquenchable fear that her daughter was gravely ill was an overwhelming reality. She needed to consult an expert without delay. I was really anxious and confused throughout the hospital visit. Patricia was taken aback by the doctor's news. Jamie was not pregnant, but her internal organs were in serious trouble, attempting to control her emotions. She felt her heart sink as she heard unfamiliar and difficult to understand medical terminology. The doctor clearly failed to grasp the concept. Things became clear when you took Jamie to the emergency room. In spite of Patricia's relief upon learning her daughter wasn't expecting, the subsequent news was far more concerning. An ultrasound verified what the doctor suspected. Jamie had a rare illness that was causing her internal organs to bulge. Even though Jamie was prescribed diuretics to help with water retention, it was evident that she need a heart transplant. Due to the scarcity of hearts suitable for toddlers, the doctors were unable to locate a donor. With the hope that a transplant could save their daughter's life, Patricia and her husband contacted physicians in Melbourne. They were fortunate to have a donor, but their journey took them abroad. Medical appointments, tests, and prescription schedules flooded the following weeks. In an effort to decrease the water retention, Jamie was prescribed additional diuretics, and she was closely observed by a multidisciplinary team of medical professionals. Watching her daughter's health decline was a stressful ordeal for Patricia. The more she learned about Jamie's illness, the more helpless and overwhelmed she felt. Patricia and her husband started looking into other possibilities, so they contacted physicians in Melbourne, Australia, to see whether a heart transplant was an option. After confirmation, the difficult choice to proceed with the procedure was made, even though they were aware of the dangers. They felt it was their only option to save their daughter's life. The three-person family began making preparations for their international vacation and relocation. Nevertheless, the trip was lengthy and tough. On the plane, Jamie's body had a hard time adjusting, and she had a string of problems. Patricia and her husband were there for her through thick and thin, offering solace and strength as she fought through the agony and misery. The operation went well. Although Jamie had a few small problems while he was healing, every day, Patricia and her husband wished their young girl a speedy recovery as they watched her battle to regain her strength. They had to tend to her needs as she lay in her bed because she was unable to move about much and was not permitted to leave the hospital. Patricia stayed determined despite the difficult setbacks. The love she had for her daughter and the assurance that they were doing all in their power to aid her recovery gave her strength. They were able to secure an extra ward whenever one became available because making daily trips to the hospital was too much. They overcame the obstacles that came their way every day by sticking together as a family. Patricia and her husband's anxiety levels rose as the days progressed into weeks, even though they were anxious to bring their daughter home. They understood that Jamie required close observation to guarantee a thorough recovery. She was beginning to feel her pulse rate normalize. And her cheeks were reddening. Her parents found encouragement for the following day in the smallest of things. Jamie started to show more and more signs of improvement over time. She felt a surge of optimism as she began to reclaim her power. She finally got herself to sit up straight one day. That girl is strong, her mom remarked. Patricia and her husband felt a tremendous weight lifted off their shoulders when they saw their little girl making progress. They were pleased. Physical therapy was initiated by the doctors for the young child. They thought it would help with her cardio, but they weren't prepared for how fast the kid would get tired. The kid spent three days in bed while her illness deteriorated. The medical staff infuriated her parents. My kid isn't some living, breathing experiment. She's mine. Are you without dignity? Paul rebuked them. The Lewis family endured a difficult period, however they maintained optimism. They were there for Jamie at her bedside for many hours, doing everything from conversing to reading to her. Signs of progress finally appeared in Jamie after what seemed like a lifetime. She felt more energized and her hunger had returned. For the first time in months, Patricia felt a flicker of optimism when the doctors expressed cautious optimism. When Patricia learned the diagnosis, her heart fell. She didn't even know what restrictive cardiomyopathy was or how to treat it. But she understood that for her daughter, she had to hold strong. There was still a long and uncertain journey ahead. Jamie would have to keep taking her medications, always running the danger of being turned down. Patricia made an effort to stay upbeat even though she knew there were still a lot of obstacles to overcome. Jamie took a long time to heal. Patricia had a lot of tests and treatments, 
and every time there was a new challenge, she and her husband worried. Jamie was always thin and depressed, and she battled to put on weight, they followed her medication schedule religiously, occasionally being scared to come near her, after more than a month in Melbourne, the couple was still getting used to living in a different land while dealing with challenging circumstances, amidst all the difficulties, the Lewis family never gave up hope, they thought Jamie would get through the struggle since they knew she was a fighter. But would they make it past the last obstacle? Patricia watched as her daughter's strength returned gradually but steadily over several weeks and months. Jamie's parents were overjoyed when she resumed playing and laughing. They expressed their gratitude to the committed medical staff and nurses who sacrificed much to preserve her life. After getting back together as a family, they transferred Jamie to a typical pediatric ward so she could socialize and make new friends. Months went by, and Jamie's attitude grew better. Her parents felt as though they had their little girl back when she started to play and laugh. They were unsure, though, if she would stay stable following her release. Patricia felt like herself again for the first time in months. She thought it possible that everything might eventually get back to normal. Thinking back on that difficult time, Patricia realized how much their family had been through. The agony, anxiety, and dread had been nearly unbearable. But they had come out stronger, having weathered it together. But when the couple's medical debt mounted, other difficulties emerged, many of the treatments and procedures Jamie had endured were difficult for them to comprehend, even with Jamie's progress, they were aware that a long road lay ahead, they loved every moment they spent with their daughter, but they also realized she needed full-time care, when they got back to the States, Patricia intended to go back to work, she was thankful for every second they had spent together and had a fresh perspective on the small pleasures in life, like hearing Jamie laugh, the sun shining, and having a family dinner, Jamie's condition eventually got better enough for her to return home, having their daughter back under their roof made Patricia and her husband very happy, they made sure she was content and at ease as she got ready to start over in America. Their friends and family welcomed them back with a gorgeous celebration, but the reunion was also filled with mixed feelings, even though Jamie had returned home, she still needed routine exams and care, although Patricia and her husband were still concerned about their daughter, they did not waver in their resolve to be strong for her, the Lewis family had gotten closer despite everything they had gone through, together, they overcame their obstacles and came out stronger. Jamie recognized her uniqueness, her grandma claimed that the reason for this was her tender heart, she was like a little angel, the family spent time together and restored their bond as a family of four after they were reunited with their elder child, Patricia was appreciative that her mother took care of her son while she concentrated on Jamie, Jamie never forgot her parents' love and support as she became older, she was aware that they had supported her through her darkest moments. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.